Hey guys, welcome to another episode of How to Be an Adult with me. Today we're doing an Excel tutorial on the high-low method. It's a technique of cost accounting which is used to split mixed cost into variable and fixed components. Let's have a look. Okay, so first of all, it's essential to note that the high-low method is not very popular because it relies on extremes of our uh, data population, but it's really simple and fast to implement, which uh, makes it a really good option when we want to test out different assumptions to our models. What we do basically is take our data points, let's say uh, costs and uh, units, a uh, volume of units. When applying the high-low method for our cost model, we uh, start by calculating the variable costs by dividing the highest activity cost minus the lowest activity cost over the highest activity volume minus the lowest activity volume. Having the variable cost, we can uh, calculate the fixed cost at either the highest uh, activity uh, point or the lowest by subtracting the volume of units multiplied by the variable costs from the fixed cost at this activity level. This way we can arrive at a simple cost model. Total cost equals fixed cost plus variable costs multiplied by the volume of units. Okay, let's look at an example to make it more clear and build it in Excel. Okay guys, so what we have here is a really simple table showing us the historical data for 2018 for the costs and uh, the units that we produced making this cost. Those are the mixed costs. So this is the whole cost for those units. And uh, we need to uh, forecast the cost for next year, for 2019. In order to do that, we need to uh, estimate the fixed and the variable uh, costs within this mixed cost. And this is where the high-low method comes into play. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, just calculate the average cost. And uh, I noticed that it's pretty much stable apart from June, so something happened in June, maybe we had some huge uh, cost saving or uh, something like that. The next thing I wanna do is just go ahead and calculate our lowest and highest points. As you can see, uh, I start with finding the minimum using the min function and then uh, max function for the maximum number. As you know, we start from the units, from the volume that results in the cost. So we're not looking for the maximum and minimum costs, we're looking for the maximum and minimum volume of units. That's really important. After that, we use the a combination of index and match. So what I do is I'll match the minimum cost in uh, the, the range here in column D and then I'll index the whole range, the costs and the units, and find the corresponding uh, row to the, the ID that got returned from the match. I'm gonna do the same for the highest point, and here are my high and low points for the model. But uh, this is kind of bugging me, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot all those on a scatter diagram, just the, the volume of units and the costs, and uh, I've covered this in orange because it's an obvious outlier. So something happened here and our costs were much lower than they usually should be. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disregard it as uh, outliers tend to uh, have a strong influence on the the high-low method. Just gonna add a column with the same volumes but uh, without the outlier. I'm gonna calculate again the same formula, min and max from this column, and here it remains the same. But you see that now it takes a different cost. Now that we have the lowest and the highest point, next thing we're gonna do is use the formula and calculate our variable cost per unit. So what we have here is the highest activity cost minus the lowest activity cost over highest activity units minus lowest activity units. That way we get 7.06 per unit. By having this, we can now calculate the fixed cost. We can either calculate those with the highest uh, data point. So we get the highest uh, activity cost minus the calculated variable cost per unit. 
uh, multiplied by the highest activity units, or we can do the same with the lowest data point. And this is how we arrive at 105,552 uh, monetary units of fixed cost. What we can do next is build our cost model. This is just a complex concatenate function that you can pause and look at pretty much uh, using the text function and some formatting to format those and make it look all nice. And I see that I have an error here. Okay, this needs to be a dot. Okay, this is my cost model. So the total costs are equal to 105,552 plus 7.06 for each unit. Next thing we can do is we can forecast our data. So we just set up a table that has the total cost, which would be the variable cost plus the fixed cost, and the fixed cost is always 105,552. What we have next is the count for the variable cost, which is the variable cost per unit multiplied by the units and adding our forecasted units, we get our total costs per month. We plot those on a graph and we see that apart from uh, June 2018, where as you remember was our outlier, or something happened and the costs dipped, we're pretty much following the trend from last year and expecting a bit higher costs, maybe due to inflation or some other reasons. That was pretty much it, a simple uh, high-low method uh, model to help you estimate the average cost that you can expect for uh, the future based on, on historical data. Remember that the high-low method is by far not the, the best way to estimate, but it's the, the simplest and the fastest thing. You can build this model in under 10 minutes and just have some general idea at how your costs are going to perform compared to the units that you have forecasted. The high-low method has some advantages and disadvantages that uh, we need to consider when applying it. The method requires no special tools or programs, which is a huge advantage. It only requires two data points and basic math knowledge. It makes determining uh, information about the cost behavior really quick, and it's a really easy way to separate fixed from variable costs. There are some uh, disadvantages as well. So the high-low method only looks at the highest and lowest point. So if we have outliers, we should be really careful about those because they're gonna make our model completely inaccurate. The method does not take into consideration uh, variation in costs. It assumes that fixed costs and variable costs are constant throughout different uh, volumes of activity. The high-low method also doesn't consider step costs. Uh, step costs are costs that are not like proportionally growing with uh, the, the growth of activity volume but uh, they rather jump at certain points. And if we have a step cost between our lowest and highest value, it's gonna be improperly attributed to variable costs, when in fact it can either be variable or fixed or a mixture of both. Probably the, the best advantage of the Halo method is that it's, it's really straightforward and it can be used to analyze uh, pricing and costing uh, as part of the budgeting process really easy and really fast. Due to all its limitations, the high-low method is not widely used, but it remains one of the fastest ways to prepare rough and fast forecasts. Okay, that was it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Please let me know in the comments or hit me up on social media to uh, to let me know if this is a format that's, uh, that makes it easy to understand things and if you'd enjoy to see more videos like this one. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even hit that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thank you for watching and see you next time. What we do basically is uh, take uh, some uh, data points, uh, the highest activity value, activity units minus the and variable costs when forecasting your production costs for the future. Sounded kind of boring. <laughs>